Okay, so this is new part-time working student, Tallulah, and uh, she's just having her assessment ride as such on Ray. We have seen her very briefly ride once before, um, and so I'm just looking at her overall position. She has a slight tendency to collapse the left hip, and uh, we've got to try and uh, get those lower legs wrapped around Ray's rather ample belly a little bit more. Uh, sometimes this can be coming from the hip that um, people find it difficult to get the lower leg a little bit more wrapped around with the toes facing more forwards. And so what I would say to Lula is if you can try as much as you can just to lower your little toe, which just helps release your knee and think just to get the little toe a little lower than your big toe. It's easier for you on the right side than it is on the left. You're probably tighter in that left ankle than you are in the right one. Don't do it until you feel the burn because we don't want your ripping muscles. But uh, you've just really got to stretch. And let's face it, you don't really do this in normal life at all. You don't actually lower your little toe. You're not putting that stretch on the outside of your calf muscles either, short of sitting on a barrel watching the television set or something. So you've just got to watch you're not tipping a little bit over to the right again. Obviously, I'm trying to film here at the same time as teach and I'm no good at looking at the screen so I have to look through the viewfinder. So if we can just work to little, get a little bit to get those lower toes a little bit lower on the outside. Let's just have a look as you come around towards me. And what we'll probably do in a minute is take your feet out of the stirrups and just let your toes point down. We tend not to cross the stirrups over in front because with our stirrup leathers being a lot further back than the stirrup bars, it tends to stick in under your thigh. So we tend just to quit the stirrups and not cross the stirrups over in front. So if they are banging your ankles at all, then we will do something about it. But if they're not, then just let your toes point down as if you're on ballet points. So you really feel that stretch, but trying not to let your legs stick out at the same time. See if you can just release your knee and just let your lower leg wrap a little bit more around his um, sides but without just drawing the heels in. It's better than it was already. And so just letting everything hang and decontract the legs so that you're not forcing it down. And just really let the toes point down. If necessary, let the toes point down with a little bit more tension to stretch everything for about maybe sort of 20-30 seconds and then just release again and let the whole leg decontract. Now the first time when we saw you ride it was obvious you've got nice light hands and uh, that is always a big bonus because it's something that I didn't feel we we're going to have to work a lot on and in this day and age it's probably one of the things we have to work on the most and people just have not been taught to have light hands which are sympathetic to the, the horse's mouth. It's all about getting it in, into an outline and doesn't matter how they do it. Saw its head down, stick draw reins on or whatever. So again just letting the legs hang down and can you feel that rather ample belly swinging underneath your legs? Good. <laughs> it's enough of it. So if Kay can just send the walk a little bit more forward, see if you can as well feel when your seat bones are rising and falling with the two sides of his back to Lula. Does his feel, back feel like it's in one piece or in two halves? Excellent. So can you call out when you think your left seat bone is actually dropping down? Just call out now. Good girl. Keep going, that's it. Okay, and you can stop saying it now. So many people, what they actually start doing is they say now, 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 and they've missed a beat because their bum doesn't quite catch up with their brain, which then doesn't quite catch up with the mouth. You can see they are actually feeling it, but it's just trying to synchronize everything to be in time. So now tell me when you think your right seat bone is dropping down. Good girl. Excellent. 
And that is when the hind leg is being picked up and drawn underneath the body, so that it means that the back is lowering at that point and taking your seat bone down with it. So conversely, tell me when you think your left seat bone is coming up and forwards. Yep, very good. Okay, now the right one. Oh, she's really quick at it. Very good. You'd be surprised how many people don't feel this. They, they feel their seat bones going down when it's up and up when it's down. Um, and sometimes we have to sort of do things like get them to put their hand on their thigh so they can feel the thigh dropping down or just feeling the swing of the belly because it correlates to when the hind leg is coming under on the left side, for instance, the belly will swing away to the right and vice versa. So when the right hind leg comes under, the belly swings away to the left. So it's whatever, you know, basically the, the, the way that you can feel it. It doesn't really matter how you feel it. It's, it's the fact that you can feel it because... This is how we teach people, as you'll learn when you do your e teaching stuff as well, um, how we teach them to feel the diagonal before they ever sort of learn to go off on the wrong one and take a sneaky look down or, um, or actually sort of look down all the time to see that they're going to strike off on the right diagonal, which is hardly very scientific. And particularly when they, for instance, want to start doing things like tempi changes and things later on in much higher level dressage, if they can't actually feel which each leg is doing, or what is each leg is doing on the ground or coming off the ground, swinging under, when the shoulder's coming back and the shoulder's going forward, it's not going to be very good for them to be able to feel that sort of thing later on. And the other thing too is, you know, people say, oh, well, only certain riders have got good feel, um, but it's really not the case in general. You will find that some people have uh, better coordination than others and they find it easier and they might pick it up quicker, but... Everybody has got nerve endings in their backside. If they're told what to feel, they'll learn to feel it. So, Kay, perhaps you'd just like to change the rein now. Now, obviously, Tallulah's a good shape to ride because she's tall and slim. And uh, just look up a little bit, too, because you've got my habit. I don't so much bow my head to look down. I sort of cast my eyes down. So that, for instance, when I'm in photographs in magazines or in my book, we're having to Photoshop my eyes in, practically. But I, I do think, and this is my excuse and I'm sticking to it, that it's to do with peripheral, vis peripheral vision. But you're, it's Sally Swift's idea of the soft eyes. You're not hard focusing on one particular object. And it's sort of concentration thing, I find. It's not that you're looking down at the neck to see if it's round or it's on the bit or what have you. It's just that um, you cast your eyes down. Nuno Oliveira was particularly known for bowing his head. Even Anya Beran castigates herself as well for looking down. So it's something that even the best rider habit that they can get into. But overall, your, your overall body alignment there is very nice, Tallulah. It's, um, you're sitting very tall. You're not leaning back. You're not hollow-backed either. Um, thighs are starting to stretch down. Just letting your legs hang like this by their own weight is probably one of the best ways of actually getting your legs to stretch. Obviously, it does help a great deal when you've got a saddle like this, which is not going to pull you out of balance, but will allow you to sit without effort. It does make a big difference. So if you just want to take your stirrups back now, with my stirrups, at least they're hanging the right way around, so a bit normally a bit easier to get the... Having said that, she's still fumbling at the moment. That's better. How do the stirrups feel now? Do they still feel OK? A bit short. Oh, even better, then we'll pop them down a hole. If you've got good length of legs, then make sure you use them. So many people ride far too short, and then it pushes them much too high in the rising trot, for instance, as well. So in a moment, we're just going to go up to the rising trot. I noticed, Tallulah, this time... Because remember in, when I first saw you ride a, um, a couple of months ago that I said in walk that you were rather too wiggly in your pelvis. I'm not noticing that today. You've obviously been working on it since, uh, since we last saw you. So that's really good. So again, trying to think of turning the toes a little bit more in, lowering that little toe, releasing your knee. Because if you were going to pick up a can on its side, for instance, you wouldn't pick it up by pinching the top half of the cylinder of the can, you would put your whole 
hand around it to lift it up from the underside of the can and it's a bit like him, he's not dissimilar shape to a beer can or possibly a, well I don't know, more like a, a gym ball I think at the minute. <laughs> Poor A. And so the more you can actually get that lower leg just lightly wrapped around, the Germans say it should cling like a wet cloth. Then the greater your general adhesion to the horse if he does do something drastic. When Sudi was much younger and he used to whip round so fast my head used to touch his backside, if my lower leg hadn't actually been around the lower half of the cylinder as such, I would have been out the side door on quite a number of occasions. But also your legs are just there to give us an aid in a split second. Oh, oh. Look, hang on. We'll have to stop for a minute because we now have a hailstorm. Right, OK, I'm just closing up here on Tallulah's lower leg. And what I want to do... Kay, perhaps you could do this for me. Ray's going to stick his head in the way. If you can just take, um, just take a knee away from the side of the saddle at the moment. A little bit. And then just see if she can get that lower toe a little bit lower. Is it going to spring back? It's quite tight, isn't it? How's it feel in comparison quite, to your own quite, ankle? She's quite stiff. Yeah, I thought, I yeah. thought that was the case. Yeah. And whether or not it's coming from your hips, mm -hmm. I don't know. But what I'll probably get is Sasha, perhaps, to um, have a look at you. Um, our next-door neighbour, who's a Pilates, an equipilates teacher. And so I've got no excuses. I've got to get round there as well to have some lessons. But I think let's just go around now to the other side. And perhaps, Kay, if you could do the same thing again. Do you find it's easier on a narrower horse, Tallulah? Um, or do you yes, think... Yeah. Quite often people are more supple in one ankle than the other, but if they've got one foot that sticks out more than the other, it will tend to cause the, the rider to collapse the opposite hip. So that's the side which is more wrapped around the horse... Um, because the, the ankle is, um, the, the lower leg hasn't got quite as much purchase on the other side, the, the rider will tend to collapse the opposite hip to that, um, to that leg and slide out to one side, which is a little bit, I think, what's happening. So if I'll just go back and if we can just start um, starting back on the lunge again, okay, and we'll pop up in a minute to rising trot. Okay, so we're just going to check Tallulah's rising trot. I just told her to take up a little bit more contact on the reins, particularly if it's going to suddenly come down with hail again and he might shoot forward. There's already a lot to like about Tallulah's rising trot. She's rising forward and back and not up and down. Her hands are really, really quite quiet and steady. If we can just get that lower leg wrapped around a little bit more over a period, she will find that she'll be a little bit more stable altogether if the horse does do something a bit untoward. But overall, that is actually very nice. She's inclining her upper body slightly forward from the hip and rising forward and back and not up and down. And if we look at her hat, which is fairly brightly coloured there, Ray shied at it when he first came in the school, um, we can see that her head is hardly going up and down. She's much more on a level. When you see people with too much um, angle in the knee and they're just bending up, uh, rising up, down, up, down, instead of forward and back as if the pelvis is on an arc, and you'll see their hat going up and down as well. I can quite often see people going past the farm here and I can see their heads over the top of the hedge and I know whether they're actually rising to the trot or not just exactly by what their hat is doing. I think Ray's a bit too full of grass at the moment. He's not normally as idle as this, but it's maybe not such a bad thing until Tallulah gets to know him. OK, and when you want to do a downward transition to walk, Tallulah, just slow your rise and sit so that you're actually slowing your descent back to the saddle. That's it. And pick up the swing of the belly with the legs then so you push him through the transition. OK, OK, perhaps you can get him going forward a little bit more again because he's a wee bit underpowered. Yeah, sure. OK, 
Okay, so again, a little play with your fingers, Salula, just to ask him to relax his jaw and back it up with your leg. And one of the main reasons, too, that we try to get the rider to lower the little toe is that when they're using the leg, it absolutely prevents them from kicking upwards and backwards. It means that they do use the leg for this slight inwards and forwards roll of the calf. Tipping a little bit out to the right there again. Just bring him back to walk again. And walk. Yeah, he needs to come quite a bit rounder. If you can actually just ask him with your fingers to relax his lower jaw, you'll find that once he's a little bit rounder, the energy you're creating isn't just all going to go out the front door, which is a little bit what's happening at the moment. So don't be afraid to take your reins a little shorter and a little play with your fingers. A couple of little squeezes left, a couple of little squeezes right seems to work the best with him. Not so that you're sort of niggling or sawing his head from side to side. It's just a little squeeze, a couple of quick squeezes on the rein with your fingers. And then when you're ready, see if you can get him up to rising trot by yourself without K's assistance this time. So you just close your legs. So I normally go off the legs pretty quickly. And then bring him back to walk again. Oh, he's just had his um, feet trimmed, and uh, I think he's just a little bit foot sore actually, because they've taken the toes back quite a bit. Our horses are all barefoot. Just let's have a look again and see. Just pop him up to rising trot again. I'm just about to run out of film while I look at it. Send him forward a little bit more because sometimes he's not really tracking up. Oh, so that's a bit better. And ride forward to walk again. Yeah, nice. Well done. Good transition, Lula. Did you feel that there so that you just... Yeah. Once again, see if you can do a couple more of those by yourself. Take him up to trot by yourself. Rising trot. Good, straight off on the correct diagonal. Then another transition through to walk, just by slowing your rise and sit when you're ready. And pick up the swing of the belly, a little bit hollow that time. Try once again. If you find that he's going to hollow slightly, just don't be afraid to ask him with your fingers again in a downward transition because the most likely time they're going to chuck their head up in the air is actually during a transition. So that's it. And send him forward a little bit more. And then ride forward to walk again. Good. And let him walk on a long rein for a minute. That left ankle is definitely stiffer than the right, and that is why you have a tendency to slip out to the right, so that your right stirrup starts to look longer than your left stirrup. Let's just have a little sitting trot before the film manages to run out. So just a few strides of sitting trot, and then close your seat muscles so that you actually bring him back to walk. Just by closing your bum, you'll find that if you actually build up a few transitions, you might be a little bit more forward. Okay, so up to sitting trot. Really not bad at all. Can you still feel your seat bones in your sitting trot, um, the separation of the seat bones, Sarula? It's so difficult to see actually looking through the viewfinder. Can you, do you think you can feel when your left seat bone's dropping down and when, you, when it's coming up and when your right seat bone's dropping down and when it's coming up? Just call out when you think your left seat bone's coming down. Now, now. Now, 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 now. That's as his left hind leg's being drawn under. Can you feel his belly swinging from left to right? 
Call out when you think his belly's swinging from left to right. I just just think now, now, now. So when you would close your left leg when the belly's swinging to the right. So think to close that left leg. Nope. It's a lot to do with the fact that your lower leg is that far off. Um, and walk again, just walk again. Overall, there's not a lot wrong at all with your absorption of the movement. You're not, certainly don't look to be wriggling anything like I expected you to from the, the way your pelvis was wriggling in the walk when I first saw you. Um, it's just, it really, really is all about trying to get this lower leg in position. And what we'll probably do is, I'll show you how to use the simulators as well, so that you can actually practice on them, because it certainly helped Femke, because her feet turned in with remarkable speed, and she was fairly stiff in her ankles, wasn't she, to start off with, Kay? Just send him forward a little bit more and walk, just make the walk a little bit more objective. Don't let him dawdle, because he's quite happy to dawdle at the minute. That's it. So think of using your right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg with the swing of the belly. And in trot, we just close the legs very lightly on the first beat of each stride unless, until the horse is really in front of the leg and then they should be able to ca carry on going without any further assistance from you until you feel they've lost a little bit of impulsion you use the legs again. And that's what's meant by being in front of the leg. In other words, the horse reacts instantly and not 10 seconds later. But try to think of using your legs a little further forward so you're not wanting to use the legs with the heel drawn up and back.